Hey, welcome back. So I'm getting ready to hoist the engine up. I got the strap installed on the outboard and I'm getting ready to hang the engine on our back rail mounted uh, do-it-yourself dinghy engine mount that hangs on the back rail of the boat. So this thing's been driving me crazy. How to make a compound curve and what I got is the curve of the rail drops down and it also curves in and out. I made a little pattern out of plywood. I've got the curvature of the top rail and the curvature of the bottom rail. It's a one inch diameter rail. So I installed a one inch core cut bit in my router and that cuts a half round one inch in diameter. That's going to cut the curve in the starboard. So I got two chunks. They're about nine inches wide by about 20 inches long of white polyethylene. It's HDPE. What I had to do was make up a jig. I had some old wood that was a pattern from something I did with a T-catch or something, but it had a nice curve on it. And I found the right angle based on that pattern and set it up so that it sits down on top of the starboard like a saddle with two cleats on either side. The only real good way to make this thing work, because I can't put clamps on it because it gets in the way of the router, I need to use double stick adhesive tape. I made one for the top cut, I made one for the bottom. So once I get the top fit, then I'll double check it on the boat and then cut the bottom radius. Also because of the curvature, this thing has to be deeper in the middle and shallower on the outer edges because I only want it to be a half an inch deep here and here, but it needs to be like three quarters of an inch deep in the middle. So what that means is, is that the cut on the other piece, the inside facing piece that sandwiches together is gonna end up being half an inch deep, half an inch deep, and shallower on the inside because of the curve of the radius. Pattern jig, everything's clamped down. I'll start routing. inch. I'm gonna take it back to the boat and check it out. Make sure it works. So what I got here is the half inch cove that I cut with the router. And actually, alignment wise, it's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the mark a little bit. Three sixteenths, maybe a quarter inch deeper, right through here in the middle. So I'll have to adjust my passes and hog it out deeper in the middle, ultimately ending up in the center line. And it'll fit the curvature of the rail. Then I can chisel out and make it fit. So now I've got the reference marks for my bottom uh, the bottom jig, so back down to the shop to cut that one out. So what I've done here is uh, just lay out some grid reference lines. So in order to hog this out and go deeper in the middle, hopefully it works. But what we have here is a little stair step. So I got depth here, depth, different depth here, deeper here, deeper here, deeper here, shallower, 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 up. 
So I'm gonna have to hand carve through this slot. Not too much, shouldn't be too much of a problem. This is the bottom rail. And I'll do the same, transferring those depths to make uh, something similar to what I did on the top rail. I put in some reference marks to know where I gotta take down the high spots. I've taken most of it out with power tools and now I'm gonna do the rest. I'm gonna do this rest of this by hand. Just sit there and pair away. So I got the grooves cut to fit the outside curve and it's deeper in the middle than it is on the outer edges. So now all I gotta do is flip this over, transfer the marks to the other half, and basically do a mirror image. So what I have to do is take apart these jigs now and flip these to the, this side, and I'll be using this side of the router template. If everything works like it's supposed to, these should be mirror images of each other. Spot on. All right, so I got everything back to the boat, test fitted it, everything works good. Uh, now I got to sandwich the two pieces together. And what I decided to use was quarter 20 flathead screws with a T-nut on top. I made a jig on how to drill it. So what I had to do was countersink a hole right here for the T-nut. That fits in there. And also countersink for the head of the flathead screw because it's tapered. What I'm using is this thing. So first I have to countersink inside here for the T-nut. So that fits. The T-nut shoulder where, where the threads are is a, a larger diameter than the actual bolt. So that's like 5 16 The bolt is a quarter 20. So it's a quarter inch diameter. So you gotta think backward through this process. So the first thing I need to do is countersink for the T-nut. I use a Forstner bit for that. It's got a pilot and that pilot that center point is going to be the reference point for every other operation for the whole process. So the drill will only go this deep and then it hits the hose clamp. So let's start off with that. So now what we got is a place to receive the top of the T-nut. So the next step is to drill for the shoulder of the T-nut, which is 5 16 so Now I'm going to turn this over, go down until this thing hits the bottom of my jig. Now I'm gonna use that center point as a reference to drill down just deep enough for the shoulder. So you see that? It stops, it stops right there. So I only drilled deep enough just to set this thing, the T-nut. I went from 5 16 to quarter inch. Now I'm gonna drill all the way through these pilot point bits will always find the center. And that's it. Because I only want my countersink to go a certain depth just to put the top of the head flush with the uh, outside of the plastic. I'm gonna set the countersink depth to that depth that I've already gauged out. And now this will only go as deep as the hose clamp is set. This side finishes flush. So when I put the two pieces together, all I gotta do is use this setup jig and I can set each depth. I'll drill each hole with each bit independently, then move to the next bit, drill another hole, move to the next bit, drill another hole, move to the countersink, countersink the backside. Now that I've done a couple of practice pieces, I think I'll uh, move on to the, to the real thing. So I got my marks set up for my holes and everything lines up and I marked for six holes. 
I set up the depth stop based on my jig. So now I just got to drill the holes for the T nuts. So the next one is the shoulder cut for the T nut. So the next one is the quarter inch hole that goes all the way through both sides. But first I have to sandwich the two sides together. So the last thing to do is countersink for the head of the screw. So now I'm going to the back side and countersinking that. So now everything's tight. Now all I got to do is trim off the excess from where I fitted it and bolted it all together. Peel off the plastic and see how it turned out. That's the back side. There's the side facing the cockpit. Round corners, rounded edges. Let's take it back to the boat and see how it fits. The final test fit. I just need to. Something. So this is our beloved 1997 Honda 9.9 uh, .9 horsepower outboard engine. And I finally got the engine bracket built. And this is how we lift it up and down. So thanks for watching. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Thanks. <laughs>